In earlier segments, we looked at the process of mass spectrometry, where we take organic molecules, ionize them, and then evaluate those ions based on their mass to charge ratios to gather information about the molecular formulas of organic molecules. We also briefly mentioned that additional information about molecular structures can be gathered by fragmenting the intact molecular ion into fragments that we can evaluate by mass spectrometry. This process we refer to as tandem mass spectrometry or MSMS for short, or as another term for it, MS superscript N, indicating that we're doing multiple iterations of mass spectrometry here. This is how it works. In mass spectrometry, initially, we generate what's referred to as a parent ion. which the parent ion is what we would refer to as our MS1 experiment. It is the first generation mass spectrum that we generate for a particular compound. The term parent ion is synonymous with the term precursor ion. And the term precursor ion has become more popular in recent years as a way of referring to the initial ion that is generated by mass spectrometry. This ion, the precursor ion, is very commonly, when we use soft ionization techniques, the precursor ion is very commonly going to be the molecular ion. Meaning the ion that corresponds to a molecule that has acquired a positive or negative formal charge by gaining or losing electrons or protons in order to have that formal charge. But everything else about the ion is intact from the original molecule. Then what happens is after this ionization occurs, we can implement into the mass spectrometer a second ionization step where we apply additional energy to the molecule in order to break some of the weak chemical bonds within that molecule and create fragments. We refer to those fragments as either daughter ions. Why daughters and not sons? I don't know, but we go from the parent ion to the daughter ion and more commonly now in current preferred terminology, rather than saying daughter ion, the typical way of referring to this is as a product ion so that we are not adding any gender to the terminology that is being used here. So the preferred way of referring to these as precursor ion refers to the first generation mass spectrum, and then product ion refers to the second generation, which we call the MS2, hence getting into the fact that this is MS, MS, referring to the first generation versus the second generation ion that is generated, or MSN, implying that we can actually do this several steps. So we can continue this process or pipeline to do additional iterations of fragmenting the ions to generate additional generations of product ions. So we could continue this with generating an MS3 spectrum and so on as desired. And MS superscript N, the N there, is what's going to refer to what generation are we looking at in terms of the number of fragments. So the N there equals the number of generations of fragments. We're going from our parent, which is our first generation precursor ion, that's commonly our intact molecular ion, to a product ion in the MS2 and onward further down the chain to generate as many generations as we want. And what will happen at each step is that we will get smaller and smaller product ions because we are completing via bombarding the sample with energy at each step. We're breaking weak bonds and thereby creating these smaller and smaller fragment ions or product ions as a result of this. So for example, 
if we had an MS1 spectrum that showed a molecular ion at a mass to charge ratio of 1350, representing quite potentially the, if we were doing this in positive mode, meaning that the ion is positively charged, we will say that this represents the M plus H ion for this molecule, where the M is the molecular weight of the compound, plus H means it's picked up one proton. In picking up one proton, it gathers that positive formal charge. And so if the positive mode mass to charge ratio is at 1350, what we could deduce is that the actual molecular weight of the compound is 1349, because that 1349 compound had a proton introduced, which has an atomic mass of one. So 1350 would result. If we fragment that, then hypothetically, if we generate fragments with mass to charge ratios of, we'll say 460, 325, 185, this tells us common ways that the molecule has broken. So we could deduce that out of this mass to charge ratio of 1350, there are some ways to break the molecule via weak chemical bonds that would enable the formation of these product ions. We could then take particular product ions and we could further fragment those. For example, taking the mass to charge ratio of 460 and selectively fragmenting that down to further smaller fragments such as 130, 175, etc, etc. And this will enable us to gather, in some cases, information about the molecular structure of compounds because we have some idea about what type of functional groups are present in the molecule. We can make predictions about where some of the weak bonds will be in the molecule and use the observed fragments to provide evidence for those hypotheses. This is usually used if we are looking at totally novel compounds. Tandem mass spectrometer is usually used in combination with other techniques such as NMR to together give us the complete molecular structure of an organic molecule. Additionally, in cases where compounds have predictable repeating units, such as proteins that are composed of the 20 standard amino acids, there are a variety of databases available that can predict what the expected product ions are resulting from individual amino acids that make up those peptides. And so we can look in that way at databases when we have an unknown to evaluate what some of the amino acids composing that protein are. And also we can further evaluate even some of the aspects of the sequence of that protein. In other words, what order do those amino acids occur in?